The Jemez Mountain salamander occurs only in the Jemez Mountains of New Mexico, of northern New Mexico, due northwest of us here in Santa Fe. The Jemez Mountain salamander is restricted to the Jemez Mountains caldera rim. It's surface active only about three months a year during the monsoon season, normally July through September. It's terrestrial and has no aquatic stage. It's lungless and depends on moisture for cutaneous respiration through its skin. And it eats primarily ants, mites, and beetles. It has a low critical thermal maximum temperature of 92.3 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the lethal temperature under laboratory conditions. This is a low critical thermal maximum relative to eastern plethodonted lungless salamanders. Based on survey data, the Hamas mountain salamander was once locally common, but now appears to be declining across its range. It occurs primarily on federal lands, in 1975, it was listed as threatened under the New Mexico Wildlife Conservation Act. In 1990, it was first petitioned for listing under the Federal Endangered Species Act. In 1991, the New Mexico Endemic Salamander Team was established. In 2000, the Cooperative Management Plan was developed by the U.S. Forest Service, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and New Mexico Department of Game and Fish. In 2006, it was uplisted to endangered under the New Mexico Wildlife Conservation Act. And in 2008, it was again petitioned for federal listing. And then in 2010, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service determined that it was uh, warranted but precluded by higher priority species, so it became a candidate species. And it's currently being further evaluated. And this map shows the primarily federal lands that the Hamas Mountain Salamander occurs on, and the red dots are positive locations, and the blue triangles are negative locations. And the Valles Caldera National Preserve has not been well surveyed, so that indicates um, a lack of salamander occurrence here. This map shows the Cooperative Management Plan habitat zones for U.S. Forest Service lands only. The essential habitat is in brown and includes most known populations. The survey zone is in red and includes disjunct or population extensions. It's kind of hard to tell with the colors here. The priority zone is in blue and includes possible isolated occurrences. The zones determine what type of habitat disturbing activities are are discouraged, such as uh, excavation and uh, mitigation recommendations for projects. The Hamas Mountain Salamander occurs in fragmented populations and coniferous forests from 7,200, approximately 7,200 to 9,500 foot elevation. It occurs in rocky soils with fractured rhyolite geology, where it can move up and down vertically through the soil column. It occurs primarily in decaying Douglas fir logs and under rocks. And Douglas fir logs appear to decay uniquely by creating chambers that allow salamanders to forage internally. And this image just shows a dense mixed conifer stand that Hamas Mountain salamanders are found in. And this image shows a complex microhabitat with rocks and down logs. The Hamas Mountain Salamander is difficult to find and monitor because it occurs under rocks and in logs in scattered, low-density populations. We use potato rakes and hands to turn over rocks and tear into logs. Surveys for Hamas Mountain Salamanders destroy Douglas fir logs, and normally only a portion of a log is sampled but in this case, the logs were completely destroyed and all Hamas Mountain salamanders were relocated for the New Mexico Highway 126 reroute around Seven Springs through occupied habitat. Threats to Hamas Mountain salamanders include habitat loss and fragmentation. And again, this image is of the New Mexico Highway 126 reroute around Seven Springs. 
Chytrid fungus was discovered recently in Hamas Mountain salamanders. It's not clear if chytrid is lethal to the salamander. It may be sublethal individually, but lethal cumulatively with other stresses, stressors such as climate change and habitat alteration. Other threats include climate change. The Jemez Mountains have been identified by TNC New Mexico as a New Mexico climate change hotspot. The Jemez grew warmer faster than any other New Mexico location, and climate change is likely to exacerbate unnatural fire regimes. <coughs> Large catastrophic fires are a recent disturbance to the Jemez Mountains. The catastrophic fire has been identified as the greatest threat to Jemez Mountain salamanders. This photo was taken by me on June 26 from my home of the Los Conchas fire from Cochiti Lake, town of Cochiti Lake. The 16,500 acre dome fire from 1996 and the 48,000 acre Cedar Grande fire from 2000 burned one third of all Jemez Mountain salamander essential habitat at moderate to high severity. And the red dots are positive salamander locations and the brown polygons are essential habitat. The Los Conchas fire started on the 26th of June, 2011. It burned approximately 43,000 acres in the first 14 hours at a rate of one acre every 1.17 seconds. It burned 156,000 acres or 245 square miles. It was the largest fire in New Mexico history and it reburned the Dome, La Mesa, and part of the Cerro Grande burns. But you can see these burn scars here. The Los Conchas fire was not contained until August 1st, so more of the La Mesa and Cerro Grande fires, fire areas burned in this map indicates. And the red dots on this map are hot spots, not salamander locations. This map shows the July 4th Las Conchas fire perimeter in red. And in nine days, it burned most essential and occupied stands south and east of the Bios Caldera National Preserve. And the essential polygons are in orange, and the occupied stands are in red. The Las Conchas fire burn severity map shows essential habitat which is hatched and occupied stands in purple. It burned approximately 18,000 acres of essential habitat. Approximately 60% burned at moderate and high severity. Some bias Caldera National Preserve timber stands that burned at high severity are also known to be occupied by salamanders, but they were mostly unsurveyed, kind of up in this area. And this is an aerial view of the moderate and high severity burn areas along the caldera rim, looking northeast toward the Sangre de Cristos. The, the long-term effects of these fires on Hamas Mountain salamanders is unknown. The salamander evolved with high frequency, low intensity surface fires and smaller patchy crown fires. Recent fires occurred pre-monsoon, so direct mortality <coughs> for the salamander was unlikely. A salamander size distribution shift of increased juvenile and decreased adult frequencies was documented post-dome fire in moderate and high severity burn areas, and the reasons for that are unclear. Maximum daily temperatures beneath cover objects in Cerro Grande fire high severity burn areas exceeded Jemez Mountain Salamander critical thermal max maximum temperature of 92.3 degrees Fahrenheit during the normal salamander surface activity period. So assuming Jemez Mountain Salamanders can find a path to the surface after these fires, increased, temperature, in, increased temperatures may increase mortality or greatly reduce the surface foraging times. So Hamas Mountain salamanders are still being found in burn areas, but we can't directly compare abundance between differential burn severities and unburned areas due to the highly variable detection probabilities. 
Amos Mountain salamanders are much easier to find in highly simplified, high severity burn habitat if cover objects remain than in unburned or low severity burn areas. Nine Jemez Mountain salamanders were found under one, one small remaining log in the Soto Grande fire high severity burn area. And it's high, highly unusual to find even two salamanders under the same cover object. So this likely indicates a high level of stress and possibly food and territory competition. The effects of fire retardant on Jemez Mountain salamanders is unknown. A recent U.S. Forest Service environmental impact statement authorized mapping threatened and endangered species avoidance areas. The Jemez Mountain Salamander is not federally listed, so it was not included in the Section 7 consultation between U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and the Forest Service. And it's not clear if the New Mexico Endemic Salamander team would actually recommend avoidance areas for salamanders. Salvage logging removes future downed log habitat disturbs the substrate, and may increase surface, surface temperatures and desiccation. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has requested that no salvage logging occur within Amos Mountain Salamander occupied habitat. Aerial reseeding of grasses may fill substrate fill the substrate cracks with dense fibrous root systems precluding salamanders' ability to move up to the surface. Aerial reseeding may redirect succession away from shrub and tree reestablishment and increase reburn potential, possibly eliminating wood cover objects. This image along the pipeline road after the Cerro Grande fire shows a strong ponderosa pine response, but large areas of the dome fire appear appear to have been primarily grasslands 15 years after the fire, and all of that area reburned in the Los Conchas fire. As part of the Southwest Jemez Collaborative Forest Landscape Restoration Project, the endemic salamander team is working with TNC New Mexico and the Jemez Ranger District on a log retention study for the Palitza prescribed burn planned for this fall to determine the fate of large Douglas fir logs under this prescription and some logs may be lined experimentally. The team's working with TNC New Mexico, the Bias Caldera National Preserve, Santa Fe National Forest, Jemez Pueblo, New Mexico Forest and Watershed Restoration Institute, and the University of Arizona Tree Ring Lab to characterize current and historic stand composition and structure in fire history of Jemez Mountain Salamander habitat. And the findings may be used to direct restoration Because Amos Mountain salamanders are so difficult to find and monitor, the team will be working this field season with TNC New Mexico and the University of Washington Center for Conservation Biology on a canine detection study to determine if dogs can be used to locate salamanders. And in summary, the New Mexico endemic salamander team will continue to investigate the effects of fire on Amos Mountain salamanders. Surveys will continue to be conducted to more accurately define occupied habitat. The team supports efforts to restore a fire regime more similar to the historic range of variability that Amos Mountain salamanders evolved with. By reducing hazardous fuels and implementing prescribed fire and fire use techniques. And prioritizing xeric mixed conifer stands for treatment. The team will continue to make mitigation recommendations to protect salamanders during forest restoration activities, such as protecting large down, down dug fur logs and implementing spring burns to reduce the potential for direct mortality. And I'd like to thank Michelle Chrisman, formerly Michelle Cummer of U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Charlie Painter, New Mexico Department of Game and Fish, Will Amy of the Santa Fe National Forest, Cindy Ramotnik of USGS, and Ann Bradley and Dave Gorey of TNC. Thank you.